Goals, goals, and yes, more goals. The twine was bulging last weekend in calf action, and we'll have all the highlights for you in just a moment. Calf TV, back for another week. Hey, folks, I'm Alex Bastiavansky. Welcome. There were a ton of goals scored last week. We'll show you as many as we can due to our time constraints, and yes, there really were that many goals. Also, Kevin DeSerpa of Jenga Academy is going to be sitting right here next to me discussing some fantastic new developments with his program. And we'll have a story uh, on an exciting new partnership between CAF and NextGen Canada. All that coming up later on. But first, yeah, we've got to get to those goals. We start with the under-14 group. ADP Academy has been rolling through the Super Group so far. Through two games, they were undefeated heading into last weekend. And Bree Academy with the latest team to feel the wrath of that ADP juggernaut on Sunday. Game highlights now brought to you by Leica Sports. Leica, your passion, our commitment. Yeah, Bree were in a world of hurt last Sunday. ADP has been lights out so far in the under 14 super group. Brutally windy day, look at those flags. Uh, didn't affect ADP though, they hit early and often. Three minutes in, Cheyenne Amrani, the tiny assassin, one zip for ADP. Three minutes later, Mateus Mello, Look at the sweet moves here as he sets it all up. Feeds Matthew Radavoisa. Uh, gorgeous 2-0 ADP. They keep coming. Cheyenne Omrani gets sprung for his second of the game. And it's ADP fully in control of three zip and just seven minutes in. Gurgis Singh had a massive game for ADP. Just under the bar with that one. 4-0 for the boys in blue. Poor Bree goalie Kassin Vithanij was under fire all day. But gets down there to make the nice stop. Second half, it got no better for Bree. ADP up 5-0 at this point. Ryan Sturdy goes for a run, and it's the boys in blue up by a six spot. 52nd minute, Gurgis, cool, calm, and collected as he evades the goalie and puts it home, and it's 7-0. ADP. They made it 8 one minute later, and then in the 55th minute, Matteo Lenardi showing off the soft touch here. Smooth work, boys. Uh, nine zip, then Gurr just goes back to work from well out here. Beautiful floater that tucks just under the bar. 10 nil ADP, and then finally Matt Radovoisa uh, goes in for a stroll. Uh, a long stroll, actually, but finally he slides it home. ADP just too good. They'd add one more to make it an even dozen. Bree just overwhelmed on this day. Afterwards, Gurgis Singh understandably satisfied with the way his squad played on Sunday afternoon. Yeah, we just finished all their chances, tried to get most goals, and we we play a passing game and we try to like pass and then like finish our chances. That's all. Like I just had like the most chances, so I try to finish them. Well, not to be outdone in the goal department last weekend was Epic, who were also undefeated as they took on Chantilly in their under-14 Supergroup debut. The boys from Hamilton uh, put up a good fight, but Epic proved to be just a bit too much for them to handle. Epic undefeated so far in under-14 play on a collision course with ADP and what should be an incredible game on August 20th. In this one, Epic, a good early chance. Justin Hendricks tries his luck. Harrison Ferrugia gets down to make the nice stop. Ferrugia, sharp for Chantilly on this day. Moments later, big save again, this time on Mark Anthony Kololancia. But nothing he can do about this one. Hendricks with a gorgeous pass to Ahmed Zaglul. Ouchie on the goal post though on the follow through. Not a good spot. He was down, but not out. One zip epic. Uh, stayed that way into the second half where epic blew it wide open. Michael Pariskurovopoulos comes oh so close right there. The little man with the huge last name. Harder last name than mine to pronounce even. No worries though, 51st minute. Michael, as I'm gonna call him from this point on, uh, strikes it home to make it two zip epic. And you gotta admire Michael. Keep an eye on him here. Probably the smallest guy out there. Uh, he ends up getting absolutely smoked by the Chantilly player right there. Gets right up though, and applies the takedown. Tough guy, don't mess with the little pit bull. That's for sure. 60th minute, Jahari Lawrence chilling out front here and there for the simple tap-in to make it 3-0 epic. And then Andrew Betancourt with the, one of the goals of the week, packing some dynamite and that right foot. Beautiful strike. Epic up by four. Great ball movement by the boys in orange here. 70th minute, Matthew Plath finishes it off in style to make it 5-0. 
And just before the final whistle, though, Ferrugia comes up with the saves of the week. The second one right here, boom. That is a doozy. Great goaltending by the Chantilly keeper. Unfortunately for him, 5-zip Epic is your final. Andrew Betancourt had a huge game for Epic and talked about just how tough it was to play in the brutal, windy conditions. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. You have to really time your pass as well, and you have to like play in front of them because uh, the ball will spin back. It's crazy. <laughs> Hope not to play here again with the win. <laughs> Welcome back to CAF TV. On to the under-16 group we move now. Sunday afternoon saw a rematch of week one. Chantilly dropped ADP the first time they faced off back on May 28th. So the boys from Mississauga were chomping at the bit to reverse that result this time around. The ADP had yet to win a game heading into this contest in the under-16 group. Would their luck change against Chantilly? Will they get a good early chance? Justin Dwarak fights off three Chantilly players, but slides it just wide of the far post. Keep your eye on this one, though. The rarest occurrence in soccer almost occurs. Chantilly keeper using the wind at his back very nearly tucks it under the bar. That would have been awesome. Ablud Imani shows off some sweet moves in the 10th minute. Lax Hancock's there to get down and make the nice stop. Though. Second half, uh, Chantilly strikes. It's Israel Perrin. Doing all the work here, I'm just going to shut up and let you watch this gorgeous play. Beautiful. King Wetterburn actually finished it off, but that play was all about Perrin. Chantilly holds on for the 1-0 victory and three points. And the boys from Hamilton are now a perfect 2-0 and in under-16 play this season. Well, heading into last weekend, the one team in the under-16 supergroup yet to make their debut was Future Academy, and they finally hit the pitch against Brampton Elite. Now, Brampton had played powerful epic extremely tight the week previous in a 2-1 loss, so they're definitely no slouches, which makes Future's debut performance against them that much more impressive. And we didn't know much about Future heading into this contest. It was our first viewing, and they made an impression 12th minute. The ball pinballs around the box here. Lucas Ferreira with the nice little back heel here. Uh, watch it. But Elite gets there for the goal line stand and keep it scoreless. Soon after, though, future pressing. Benjamin Segal slides behind the Elite defense. Nice little tip in. And one zip. Future in the first half as they draw first blood. And then some nice ball movement by Future. But the Elite keeper gets down in time to smother the ball. Second half. Future. Continues on the attack. Kalen Robinson tries his luck from 30 yards out here and nearly pulls it off. Great sprawling save there, though, by the elite goalie. Soon after, though, Robinson does come through. Watch as he nicely corrals the ball and smokes it home. 2-0 for Future Academy in the second half. Elite nearly gets one back late in the contest, though. Uh, off the nice one-timer out front here, but keeper Anthony Guerreri sprawls to make the nice save and Guerreri hung on for the shutout two zip future is your final elite winless now on the season but have shown strongly in both their contests to date so kind of unfortunate that they're uh, pointless so far okay back to the under 14 group we go Toronto International taking on Brampton Elite Tio hits the score sheet first 20th minute Kai Garvey one zip for Toronto four minutes later Ethan Hunter to Trivon Fuller, making it look easy as he goes top shelf. 2-0 Toronto going up. I apologize, Brampton game sheets were unreadable, so I don't have names. But this is a fantastic goal in the 30th minute by Mr. Number 13 to cut the lead in half. But in the 39th minute, Kai Garvey again. And International goes up by a 3-1 count. Second half, Toronto further extends its lead. Fuller gets chopped down in the box. Uh, Jaden Trudeau takes and makes, and it's 4-1 for T.O. Brampton gets one back late, corner kick. Mr. Number 3 there to knock it home. 
They cut and lead in half, but that's as close as they would get on this day. 4-2 Toronto is your final. Kai Garvey was man of the match for T.O. with two goals, and he liked his team's play better in the first half, actually, as opposed to the second. Today we played great. First half we played amazing. Second half we were sloppier, but we can do much better. All thanks to the team, because without them passing it, I could, couldn't score my goals at all. Okay, let's take a look at some uh, scores from the CAF Open Super Group. Three games last weekend uh, started off with Branton City doubling up BSC Academy on June 12th from Centennial Stadium. Uh, City looking very strong so far this year. And then uh, a behemoth matchup between Supernova and Toronto, Croatia. Two very strong teams. They scrap it out to a 1-1 tie uh, that same evening. And finally... Uh, Epic Toronto with a 2-1 win over the Atomic Selects who have yet to garner uh, a win so far this season. Okay, league table. Let's see where all the teams currently sit, starting with the under-14 group. As mentioned, Epic and ADP. That game in August is going to be a massive encounter, so check your calendars for that. Circle it. Uh, both with nine points, London Elite in third, tied with Toronto International in the under-16 group. Epic sitting on top with Chantilly, both with six points. Uh, Dragon Force in third, tied with Mississauga United. And there's Future uh, picking up a win in their first game. They now have three points on the season. And in the open group, City sits on top with seven points. Supernova and Croatia, both tied with five points. Epic FC with four BSC Academy with three and Atomic Selects, as mentioned, yet to pick up a point. Welcome back to Cat TV. Alex Bashevansky here in the Rogers studio and joined now by two members of Jenga Academy, yes, interesting name, Jenga, and uh, Kevin DeSerpa is the head coach. He knows exactly what he's doing with these guys, and he's going to give us some background behind uh, the Jenga name. And to my immediate left, Noah Nemich, and yes, there's different ways you could say the last name, and I'm probably brutalizing it. Give us the name one more time. Nemietz. Nemietz, okay. And when you see the spelling on the screen, you'll understand why I have a problem with this. But, guys, welcome to the studio. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Jenga, let's go back to the basics here. And mm -hmm. talk about it. We had you on last year, but yep. uh, for those who may not have watched the program last year, let's talk about Jenga Academy. Um, the, even the name behind it, what's, uh, wh where Jenga comes from and what it means. Well, um, it started in 2009 when I quit playing professional soccer and I wanted to uh, start an academy and train kids. So there was uh, a lot of talk on what it was going to be called. And many people threw out many different names and I decided to go with Jenga because it was a style of play that I liked and a style of play that was attractive to, to me and to many people. So I did my research, there was no Jenga soccer in Canada, so I, I, I went with There's that. There's an actual definition to the name though, isn't it? Like when it yeah, comes the, to, and, and, and what is it? It's a rhythm of movement and a special sway of, of the body that can deceive a defender right. in a soccer term. So uh, that's kind of what I went with because that's the type of style of player I would like to train and create. Right, excellent. This gentleman to my left here, we've got some great footage we've been showing of him playing last year, scoring some incredible goals. And I just found out, and I knew he was playing a year up, and, and Kevin actually just informed me you were playing up two years last year because this year you're actually playing, sorry, playing under 13. This year. This year you are. Last year he was playing under 14. Um, Noah, First of all, how did you enjoy, I mean, as I said, we watched you score some incredible goals. How did you like last year playing up against kids who were so much older than you were? It was great, but it was obviously tough because they're much stronger and faster. But I had to put up with that and just play my game. And how, but how much would you say you learned from playing against kids who were so much older, bigger, and faster than you are? Um, I learned to play the ball quickly because if I don't, then they'll smash right through me and I, it's a higher chance of getting injured. Right. And as we said, still some pretty uh, awesome highlight reel goals you managed to score. Yeah. You've had uh, Noah in the program now for, I believe you said, almost six years. Almost six years. He yeah. started uh, training with Jenga when he was eight. Right. So you've seen a lot of this guy play and uh, it goes without saying you're pretty impressed with this game, I guess. You know, like there's certain players that can pick up things immediately. And then there are certain players that can pick up things a little bit slower. 
And Noah is a player that picks it up immediately. And his intelligence on understanding the information is right there. So uh, his improvements are faster and they're uh, much more progressive in, in a positive way because of his understanding of the information, his mentality, his also maturity for his age. Right. Uh, he's been with us for a long time. Our mentality is to act professional and to be professional and to train professional. So that's been implemented into him for six years. And uh, you know, you watch the goals that he scores and the plays that he's done. He's still only 13 years old. So uh, he has another year or two to still grow a little right. bit more and get a little bit more mature. And I think there we have uh, we have really have something because you know I'm not just saying this because he's my player. I'm saying this because every team we play against says that this guy is unbelievable. But he was one of the best best guys on the uh, on the turf last year when he was playing up two age groups in the calf super group. As we saw, we're running out of time, and I know you wanted no to touch yeah. on um, two great tournaments you guys got to play in. And no, were you a part of them as well? You got to go over yes. and play in Portugal and in Spain last year. Tell us about him. So two years ago we went to Barcelona and we got the opportunity to play against some big uh, teams. One, one of them was Sevilla. It was our first game of, of the tournament and Noah played and uh, the actual coach of Sevilla came up to me and said, you're a player right over there, uh, he's, he's something special. So uh, that went really well for us. Uh, now we're, we're going into a tournament that is in Portugal and it has another uh, tournament with big name teams, PSG, Pauk, uh, and we picked uh, sporting uh, in our group so it's actually another a blessing because these kids get to challenge themselves against some very high competitive real serious kids their own age at a high level club right how did you find playing against these guys what's it like for you playing against these guys and the, the skill set you see from the European players um, over there it's more mentality is more direct to soccer but over here it's more everywhere because there's hockey football their sports over They're there. They're focused well. on that soccer, yeah. is what you're saying. It's yeah. all soccer there. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you love the challenge that these kids got from being over there and what you saw. Of course. I saw Noah do things against potential Sevilla top players. Right. They are Sevilla. They're 10 years old, 11 years old, 12 years old. Doesn't matter. He's Canadian. They're from Spain. And he's up to beat with them, and he's actually, when you see some of the highlights, they're unbelievable. Yeah, and thanks for providing the video, by the way, that You're we're welcome. taking a look at of some of the You're great welcome. stuff. Um, guys, thank you so much for being here. And Our if people want to find you. it, we should mention, by the way, it's Kitchener Waterloo, uh, is where you guys are based out of. If people yep. want to find out more about it, uh, Jenga Soccer. .ca is where they can head to, right? Absolutely. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much. We're going to obviously thanks for having correspond us. with you guys as the season goes along, but uh, thanks for being in the studio. Awesome. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank more Cap TV coming up in just a second. Welcome back to CAF TV. Well, CAF was thrilled recently to announce a new partnership with Next Gen Soccer, something they feel is going to be a huge benefit to its members. And Next Gen, in April and May, held its first ever Canada Regional Training Showcase at the Ontario Soccer Centre, with nearly 200 CAF players attending, and the cream of the crop were selected to Next Gen International Select Squads. So what is Next Gen, and why is CAF so excited? We find out now. We're here today at OSA um, in collaboration with CAF. So CAF are our Ontario Player Development Partnership with NextGen Canada. So we're looking to supplement and support existing best practice platforms. So we're delighted to be partnered with CAF. We see tremendous potential in partnering with CAF to inspire, educate and empower promising young players within the CAF platform to support the CAF membership through player development, coaching support and parental education. Uh, this is a no-brainer, let's, let's make this happen, you know, with CAF growing the way it is and giving the opportunity to the kids uh, to be able to platform to another uh, opportunity, whether it be scholarship or, or professional. A player with talent will never reach the potential without attitude, character and leadership. Next Gen Canada is an extension of Next Gen USA. Uh, we've been speaking about bringing this program into uh, Canada. 
It's proven success. It's a true pathway for players looking to get to college, university and the professional level. Um, it's really an identification process. But it's, uh, it's just a, a pure development program for, for boys and girls. It really shows the level um, coming first gen here to Canada, really gives the impression to players what it means to be at the top. You know, it gives them the professionalism, you know, getting in a, a taste of what it actually could become, both scholarship and both professionally, which is very good for them. Really enjoy trying to catch everything possible, especially in training. Why? Because we know you can parry that one, right? But can you hold that one? The training level and the coaching staff, you can tell that they're at a high caliber level. The players, um, it's pretty much like an all-star team, so everyone's skill level is serious, everyone's being serious. The attitude and um, it's, just positive, it's just a positive place to play. Uh, we're very excited at this partnership that CAF has done with Next Generation, Next Gen in the USA because now landing soon will be Next Gen Canada and hopefully it will just give a nice platform for players to be able to move on to these opportunities. It's definitely an exciting time for CAF and Next Gen. If you'd like to be a part of CAF Next Gen International Development Festivals this summer, you can. Taking place from July 4th through 7th in Oakville, look at the coaches from Argentina, Scotland, England, Belgium, Holland and France. The players will learn from the best, play with elite players, take part in workshops. It's an amazing opportunity for players to take their game to that next level. And if you want to find out more, pretty simple. Head to CAFSoccer.com or NextGenUSA.org. There are a limited amount of spaces, so if you're interested, be sure to sign up soon. Okay. Calf countdown time, the top five plays of the week. Number five, uh, Matthias Mello of ADP. Gorgeous. Splits the defense. Uh, feeds it to Matthew Radovoisa out front for the score. Beautiful goal. Number four, Harrison Farugia of Chantilly making not one but two massive stops against Ip Epic last Sunday. Chantilly lost five zip, but Farugia was awesome. Number three, Brampton Elite number 13. We don't know your name, but with a shot like this, I'm sure we'll know it soon enough. Beautiful goal against Toronto International. At number two, Andrew Betancourt against Chantilly lowers the boom. What a right foot. What a one-timer. And number one, Israel Perrin of Chantilly forever. Just absolutely toys with the ADP under 16s here. First, he shakes off three players at midfield, turns on the Jets, and hits King Wetterburn out front for the finish. But that play was all parent. Definitely our play of the week. And that's it for this week, folks. Remember, though, head to CAFSoccer.com for all the latest news, stats, and standings. At CAF underscore football on Twitter. And, of course, Canadian Academy of Football on Facebook. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Thank you.